Okay. I was talking to a friend a friend today. I was talking to my brother today. I really don't want to do this video with my brother, but he is my business partner. So what we're going to tell you today is we built our business, we built our career, became net worth millionaires through real estate investing. But what fueled us is the real estate sales career. We realized that the real estate sales career is a really tough career. Yes, one of the hardest careers there is. 80% to 85% failure rate within the first two, two years. to five years, without a doubt, correct? And then after that, probably the rest of the, everybody else fails. Now, you have these, you have some agents or some teams or some companies where you see these people come in, they skyrocket to success, and they stay there. Those would be the best business people for some reason they are like the best athletes right then there's the rest of us some of us aren't even good enough to come in and skyrocket and do crazy sales so for us that was the case we had to work hard now the seven year mark for any business if you could stay in a business long enough is where your business will really start to change or it has for us and maybe you can use some of this ideology and our experience to figure out where you are right because year one to year two yeah it was the toughest the toughest you are ready to fail you can't get ahead you probably have another job yes or support or your spouse or somebody else is supporting you okay so the first five to six years with full-time jobs i was a barber cutting hair if you look at my uh picture on my facebook my kid got a fresh haircut that was me doing that and i i was uh working at stop and shop and had other odd jobs and i mean this is super important because that usually when you start you're doing something else and i like to always say this it's not that you have a full-time job and you're doing mm. a part-time hustle if you want to succeed in your part-time hustle, it's you have a full-time job and then you're hustling full-time. So yes, that's 80 hours a week. 80 hours a week, right? Because you're trying to build a business and you still got to pay the bills. Yeah. That's when you're the brokest. Then you get to the point where you're like, all right, this business is going to support me all the way. So you end up leaving whatever your other business is. That's about three, four, or five year mark. At least that's what it was for us. Could be six or seven too. Could be six or seven years. Right around that time when we left our other jobs because we're like, hey, if we're going to do this, we are just going to go for this. We're going to go do sales. And then what happened, Arthur? And then that first year we jumped into the business, the sales took right off. Because now you're focusing all of your attention mm -hmm. on the business, the main thing, the one thing. Focus. Focus. The sales took off more than we were selling, but not enough to support our lifestyle. Not enough to buy more real estate. We were still renting at the time. We were actually getting evicted out of the apartment because the sales career or the business could not pay to sustain us to pay our bills. Now, three, four, five year mark is probably where most people want to quit. And this guy would come to me every day and say, listen, bro, there are so many other opportunities. We can paint, we can paint striped lines at the airport. <laughs> we could do all kinds of things. Construction, handyman. Everything, paint company. But I told my brother, hey, let's stick with the main thing. We're five years into it. Let's keep going. So in real estate, we couldn't break $10 million in sales for the first seven years. Yeah, which is a big, I think, a big mark for most agents. Like, I think if you get to that $10 million mark, you're doing really good. You're in the top 5%, 10%. Right. This is where you get to earning a hundred fifty, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand in income, in commissions, which is where, you know, in you pay taxes, then you have business expenses, and then you actually might be able to keep a hundred thousand or more at you that start, point in time. And you start to learn business and all of the important things because you got money coming in, so you get to learn how to allocate those resources, the money, the accounting skills, possibly a higher of administrative support. Mm-hmm. And then comes the beautiful seven-year mark. It takes about seven years for the average person or a hard worker who just doesn't have all the lucky strides in the world 
to be able to get to the point where your business is finally able to have some employees, start sustaining the business more consistently, have a client base of people that actually um, you recommend know, you, refer recommend you, you, refer reuse you, reuse you again. Right. So if you're starting a business, whether you're in year one or year six, which year six you usually want to be done. Yeah. That's the toughest. It's always the toughest before you take it to the next level. Year Just six was that. when David lost all his hair. Yeah, year six I lost my hair and I got gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the lesson from us is it takes about five to seven years for your business to really start growing and just remember in that five to seven years what did we do read books went to seminars we just came back from a three-day seminar um, learned grow cut, improved cut out old friends make new more successful friends so we can learn from people above us get mentors get mentors um you know, there's all kinds of things. But one thing I can personally tell you, advice that I learned is, hey, don't get distracted. You know, an example would be we, we because of our career and our success, we try to start a painting company that didn't work because every Fair. company you're starting really needs your attention. And energy. And your energy, right? We tried to do all, we try to do a coaching company. People would literally pay me three hundred dollars to talk to me for an hour and then i decided you know what this just isn't worth it because i make more money in real estate without having to be anywhere any specific time so right. that was a distraction just don't get distracted and within if it's not going well year one within five to seven years you got to make that commitment but after seven years man our business is now blowing up, right? So it went from that 10 million mark all the way up to a 46 million mark, which for most agents, they probably won't hit it in their career. And I think that the good news is you can. It's just gonna take a little time. And then you're gonna have different struggles and different challenges and different opportunities as they always arise in business. But the one thing I wanna point out, just to wrap up your point, is a lot of times you hear on the internet, Oh, five streams of income, 10, 15 streams of income billionaires have. But if you actually read the biographies of these billionaires or multi, multi millionaires, mm -hmm. most of them made all of their money in one thing okay. with an extreme focus. And then once they got super successful, they diversified. But they own 10 companies. They don't run 10 companies. There's a big difference. There. Right. Now, we started out in real estate sales. Now we have real estate investments. We do flips. We have a property management company, right? But we got here by doing one thing, which was real estate sales. Right, so, we didn't start five companies at the same time. When we started to diverse and kind of diversify and start other companies, our business actually started to plummet. Yeah, so we hope this helps you in business and in life. Just remember, it might take you seven years. Think. Don't forget to spend time with your family during that time because you don't want business to be the most important thing. But if your road is a little bit slower, that's okay. Just stick with it. Slow road, hard.